Hello, welcome to another video. I need to just say before I really get into this that my voice is kind of going, or I should say it's coming back. I, um, I <laughs> stupidly, it's November, and I thought going wild swimming in Suffolk would be a good idea. And after that, I just came down with a cold, I lost my voice. I just got back from Paris late last night and believe it or not, today is like my best day. The past couple of days I've just been feeling so awful. Um, but yeah, back in London, straight back into it. I had an early morning meeting with my financial advisor. Um, so yeah, straight back into London life with meetings. And I have come to Covent Garden because I am finally going to the Vashi store. Vashi is a beautiful jewellery brand and I first discovered them at the beginning of lockdown, so a long time ago now. And they have this gorgeous flagship store, I think it's their flagship store, it must be, in Covent Garden. So I've come here, I'm going to discover the brand. They do beautiful personalisation of their jewellery and yeah, going to find out a bit more about it. First of all, I'm going to grab some breakfast at the Ave Bar and then we're going to go and check out the store. We've got little Christmas trees up already. Covent Garden always do the best Christmas decorations, so I'm so excited for them to finish it all. What a day! The sun is shining. I'm happy. Let's have a quick breakfast at Ave Bar. I have gone for the acai bowl, get some goodness and antioxidants in me, a lemon and ginger tea. There we go. Oh, and I can hear this going off. <laughs> I've just posted my reel of the um, vegan boulangerie in Paris. It was so, so good. Covent Garden is looking so Christmassy already. I feel like I've gone away for just one weekend and all of the lights have gone up. Well, I say all of the lights, I'm, I think probably just Covent Garden at the moment. I don't think Regent Street or like Soho have got the lights up. I don't think so anyway. But look how gorgeous Covent Garden always do it so well. My voice is such a nightmare. It keeps going. <laughs> and here is the Vashi store right on the corner. Right, let's go and check it out. First time here. Okay, so this is the shop floor and everything that you see is completely customizable. You can have a piece made totally bespoke. And actually everything that you see on display, you can totally customize. So you actually can't walk away on the day with an item. So everything on display is actually like the collection, if that makes sense. I don't know another store like this where you, you walk in and everything that's on display is basically there for inspiration and then you get to create your own special piece of jewellery and everything is made in the store. We've got like downstairs, I'll show you in a minute, where you can have the consultations, talk about what you want, design the item and then they actually make it up here and downstairs. So it's a really, really special process because you end up feeling that the item that you end up with is so special and unique to you and no one else has that. How beautiful is this ring? I love the detail on that ring. I am actually wearing some fashy today. So this ring I adore. Take it off and show you. That inner disc actually spins, the diamonds on it. Love little details like that. And then I've got this one here. The diamonds go all the way around the outside. So beautiful. And then my earrings. I've had these connections earrings for a long time. And the diamond outer area can actually be detached. So you could just wear the little gold stud in the middle. And it's worth mentioning actually, all of the gold is recycled at Vashi. And the diamonds are ethically sourced, which as you know is so important to me. And the whole concept of this store is that it's accessible, it's friendly, it's welcoming. Even though it is fine jewellery, anyone can walk in and have a look. And there's also a bar downstairs, you're welcome to have a drink. You're just immediately made to feel so welcome. And I think that's what makes Vashi so different to a lot of fine jewellery brands. Because a lot of other stores where they are creating beautiful diamond pieces, you can be made to feel a little bit... Um, uncomfortable I suppose and made to feel like you have to spend a lot of money 
Whereas Vashi, there are so many different price points, especially the connections collection that I'm wearing now, connections collection. So this is the connections collection as well as this necklace. So this is a very accessible price point, um, which is quite unusual for a fine jewellery brand. And I felt it immediately as soon as I walked in, they're just like, hello, welcome, come in, have a look. You're not made to feel like, oh, you're not meant to be here, which I've definitely felt in the past with jewellery brands. Um, so that's what sets this apart, as well as being ethical and um, sustainable. Uh, like I said, the gemstones are responsibly sourced, which I just think is, I mean, it should be the standard, right? But unfortunately it's not, and that's what makes yeah, Vashi stand out. So you can see the workshop is over there, right in the window. So this is where it all happens. You can have your consultations down here, completely design your pieces and actually see it being made, which again is so unique wonder what they're cooking up in there. I'm going to write a little message on the iPad here and then it goes directly onto the wall. These rings here are completely bespoke and this is a purple sapphire here and pink sapphire. Definitely sparkles, doesn't it? <laughs> and I've just sized it down a size. Oh, it's an easy one then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, at least that will fit perfectly now. first time I've spoken. <laughs> I have come for an early morning walk. Look how still the water looks. Such a lovely morning. I'm really glad I woke up early enough to do this. There we go, there's a little bit of urban wildlife for you. <laughs> I love the reflections in the water. Hiya, so the past couple of days I have just had full on like admin meeting kind of days like Honestly, nothing fun has actually happened. My voice is better, there's something to report. It's still a bit nasally, um, but I feel like so much better in myself the past few days. I was just struggling with like my energy levels. Um, and I think ideally I would have just been in bed recovering, but I had so much to do. <laughs> I literally couldn't get out of anything, um, which is annoying, but, Maybe sometimes that is for the best because it's a distraction and I am the kind of person where I always love the idea of like staying at home and like the idea of a duvet day right now I'm like oh my god that would be dreamy but I know if I were to do it give me half an hour of that and I would be restless I'd be like itching to get out and do something and I just wouldn't last. Like, I genuinely don't think I can have a whole day at home. It just can't be done. I don't know why. It's quite frustrating, because I, like I say, I love the idea of it, but my body is just like, nope. <laughs> and my head is like, nope. <laughs> we need to be doing something. What's the next activity? Done the duvet day for an hour, and now we're on to the next thing. Uh, I've got just one of those, like, go, go, go brains. Um, which I guess it has its pros and cons. Uh, which is why yoga is so good for me. Like yoga, it, it really grounds me and centers me and like bring, brings that um, serenity. It forces peace and calm into my life, which is very needed. Um, so yeah, since I last saw you, I have just been running around like a headless chicken, um, catching up on work because I went to Paris obviously and I wasn't on emails and they just like somehow accumulate like crazy um, and this morning I've had two meetings uh, one with smart skin which was really productive and then one was also to do with smart skin but not with smart skin if that makes sense just like a business proposition so that was interesting um, and I have run home I've quickly oh 
never normally hear traffic out here. Interesting. Someone's angry. Um, yeah, I've run home, quickly packed, because I'm going back to Sussex for the weekend. I haven't been home to Sussex in so, so long. I don't know where the time has gone, it's pretty crazy, but it is my grandfather's birthday, so we're going out for dinner tonight. It's Thursday. I would normally, if I were going back for the weekend, obviously go back Friday night, but um, yeah, we're doing a nice dinner Thursday night, which means I have tomorrow at home and I'm so excited. Daisy May will be at school, so it's an opportunity for me to get some headspace, really knuckle down with work. There's so much that I want to get on paper, loads of ideas that I have for next year. Um, and I feel like when I'm back in Sussex, I have a clear head. In London, I'm being pulled in all directions and it's really hard to have like one solid work day where I'm like writing or, you know, coming up with ideas. It's more reactive in London, whereas I feel like when I'm in Sussex or outside of London in general, I'm more proactive, um, which is so necessary. So yeah, here's to being proactive tomorrow and not reactive. <laughs> My case for one weekend. I fill it with loads of products and stuff that have been sent to me without me knowing that they're going to come um, and I always just send it to family because there's only so much stuff that one girl can have. I have missed driving my car. I haven't driven in a long time. I don't know why I'm singing everything today. I've just sent my friends like a voice note of me singing. I am such a voice noter, by the way. That's one thing you probably don't know about me. My friends are used to getting like two, three minute voice notes on WhatsApp from me, just singing to them, basically. Um, yeah, I haven't driven for a few days because I was in, oh no, I didn't charge. <gasps> Oh no, I did! I did charge! There we go! I am organised! I don't have any petrol though. So this is the hybrid. Uh, it's the Jaguar E-Pace hybrid, which means, well it's the PEV. So it means it's a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So it means when I get to zero on the electric, it will automatically bounce over to the engine. So I actually do need to go to the petrol station because I like to have a full tank just like for those exact reasons when I'm doing long journeys. I don't want to panic and think, oh my God, I need to quickly plug in. I don't have to worry if I've got a full tank of petrol, it just automatically bounces over. So um, yeah, that's my technical car <laughs> talk. Chuck, you are probably gonna watch this and be like, doesn't actually bounce from electric to petrol, but <laughs> there you go. That's the way I'm gonna describe it. Um, but yeah, I haven't driven because I was in Paris and then when I'm in like just central London, I do find I walk a lot. Like I walk to my morning meeting today. So it's very useful though when I want to get out of town, like today, driving to Sussex. This is so much easier for me to bring back all my stuff because normally if I were getting the train, I wouldn't be able to bring all that stuff back for my family. It just kind of accumulates in my um, house. I feel like that's the second time I've said accumulate in the past like hour. Did I say that on film a minute ago? I'm in a really weird mood. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to share my live location with my grandma because I'm going straight to grandma's house and then they can track me rather than them <laughs> calling me being like, darling, where are you? And then, yeah, let's get going. Go to the petrol station and then we'll be on our way. I made it to Sussex. I am back at my grandma's house. I came straight here because we went out for a nice dinner for my grandfather's birthday. We went to a place in Brighton called the Flint House and wow, the food was incredible. I'd actually heard good things about it, but I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Every single dish that we had was amazing. It was like British tapas food. So loads of little sharing plates, little small plates, and every single thing that we had was amazing. So I would highly recommend it if you are in Brighton. Um, and yeah, I've come back and I'm staying at my grandma's, which is so nice. I used to stay here a lot when I was little and I've got so many amazing memories of being in this house. And I don't stay here very often as an adult. I literally can't remember the last time I did. What is this? 
What is that? Oh my. It's this. This old bad boy candelabra. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this is like, that is one hell of a candlestick. <laughs> things in my grandma's house is so funny um well that's what was on my face um oh look is that the shadow what shadow is on the oh it's the can't the um chandelier sorry you know when you're in like i haven't been in this room in so long so i'm just yeah figuring it all out I genuinely can't remember the last time i stayed in this room i think probably uh, a few Christmases ago or something, but I love coming back here. It just feels really nostalgic and I feel so at home and so peaceful being here. Just, yeah, I feel very calm. I love it. And um, tomorrow I'll go to my mum's house and spend two nights there, Friday and Saturday night. I'm so excited to see Daisy May and Noodle. Oh, I haven't seen Noodle in so long, I think since the summer. I literally just don't know where this year has gone. It is crazy. No, that's that's a lie. I have seen Noodle. They brought Noodle to London. So the first night I spent in my new house, I had Daisy May and Noodle staying with me. Uh, so that would have been beginning of September. But I haven't seen Noodle since then. We're obviously now end of November, so it's crazy. I think I'm going to wake up early and go for a nice run along the seafront. I used to do that a lot um, when I was spending a lot of time in Sussex last year, well, beginning of this year, and it's such a nice run. I haven't run in a while though, so I probably won't be able to do the full 10K, but I can give it a go. It's only 9.30, but I think I'm gonna get some sleep. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Morning! I have made it to Brighton Beach and it's a grey old day. I've parked right by the tennis courts um, and I'm gonna go for a run and it's raining! Well it's kind of like spitting, it's not like proper raining but I'm really worried that it is gonna chuck it down any minute. Um, I can't really hear myself because I've got these earpods in. I'm not gonna do a proper like 10k run I'm not prepared for that at all. I haven't exercised in two weeks, like at all. <laughs> the last exercise I did was on the yoga retreat in Suffolk and that literally was two weeks ago. But I just needed to listen to my body, you know. I came down with this cold, my body needed to fight it and I mean I'm still technically fighting it because my voice isn't 100% but it's time to get my body moving. I miss it. I crave it. I want to get a sweat on. So I'll probably end up running like a 5k. Normally down here I would run 10k, but there's no way I'm going to do that. Just my body, I haven't done it in so long anyway, so I physically can't, but there's no point pushing yourself when you've taken some time off. You just need to ease into it, take it easy, um, be kind to yourself, be kind to your body also listen to your body that's something I'm doing more and more of the past like year and a half two years I've just been listening to myself like actually taking a minute to be like do I want to go for a 10k run no <laughs> don't do it to yourself <laughs> sometimes I wake up and I'm like yeah I want to run like 25k my body isn't physically capable of it but I'm like you know ready to go and they're the days when I do do the long longer runs um so yeah, just becoming more in tune with your mind and body is so powerful. It's actually not as cold as I thought it was going to be. Right, a bit of water. I'm going to stretch down there, down an alleyway. <laughs> and then I'm going to get going. Oh my gosh, it started raining. All that about listening to your mind and body. Maybe you should listen to the forecast. <laughs> oh, it was a nice run though. I think I did about 8k. Yeah, I did eight, exactly eight kilometers in the end. Really good run. It only started raining at the very end. I'm gonna take you down. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm gonna take you down to see the sea very quickly. Um, Cause I feel like you've only just seen me talking about the beach and you haven't actually seen it. So we'll pop down there quickly and then 
I need to run home, get dressed and start work. So these are the beach huts over in Hove. I parked up this way and then I ran all the way to Brighton Pier. And then, so from here to Brighton Pier and then back is exactly eight kilometers. And here's our very pebbly beach. It's a little bit different to other European <laughs> beaches, but there you go. Whenever I'm in Brighton, I always have to come to this supermarket. It is a sustainable and I think vegan, yeah, vegan supermarket called Kindly. It's amazing, I love it. During lockdown, I was in my absolute element because I'm pretty sure everything is vegan. Just love it. And they do really good hot drinks and I love everything up here. I've just got the vegan sausage roll to go. Yum! Vegan sausage roll! Oh, I'm losing it. <laughs> I've come to Brighton to see two of my old school friends, Christy and Kat, and we have this tradition where we always go to see a tarot card reader in the North Lanes. So we've got that booked in and I'm so excited because they're always so accurate. Three chai lattes for the ladies. Here we go. Hey girls! <laughs> This is the place that we come to, it's called Two Feathers. They've literally got so many gorgeous crystals in there and then you can have your reading done upstairs. Look at these crystals, wow. I have found this mist by Daisy May Sprays, which I found hilarious. Also a rose quartz, I love rose quartz. Um, this is actually for a friend. And then this one is moss a gate uh, and you can actually see the moss on the inside so this one on the right this one here is the one that i was drawn to the most had such a lovely day with the girls i love our tradition of going to see the tarot card reader it was almost exactly a year ago that we last went there and saw a tarot card reader, but it was actually a different woman today. Today we had a lady called Kay, and the place is called Two Feathers in Brighton, in the lanes, and she was brilliant. We all had the best experience with her, and she was very compassionate, definitely very much like a woman's woman, and really, it was almost like she was empowering all of us to just step into our own and just become more in touch with our feminine side and balance that masculine and feminine energy, which is something that all of us resonated with. I got the Emperor card, which she said at the very beginning, like your work is very um, prominent in your life and it definitely like dominates a lot of who you are and what you're about and that's masculine energy because I'm very like regimented and um, she said I'm very much a leader but then there's also this feminine side to me where I'm a very like I guess that's the soft side of me in a way where she said you are very compassionate and you very much like helping people and I guess it's about this constant balance of like yeah, balancing the two, I suppose. And one thing, I wrote like literally everything down on my phone. It was so interesting. Like afterwards, I um, wrote literally everything down and I've got so much here in my notes. I categorized it, classic me, um, into life, heart, work, and then my guides. I'm a big believer that I have, like, I know I feel my guides around me. And I didn't realise, because I asked her about my guides today, because she could feel them in the room. This is probably sounding so crazy to a lot of people that aren't into this at all. Um, it's just something I feel, you know, in my heart. Like, I, I know I have guidance from something. And I feel them every now and again. And, yeah, I asked her, and she, because she kept mentioning, like, you know, I feel your guides in the room. And... Currently I have three, but they come and go, and as you grow and change as a person, so do your guides. And I didn't realise that. I thought they stay the same throughout your whole life. So, you learn something new every day. Um, I'm just gonna like have a look through, I'm holding my new crystal by the way, as we talk. Um, travel is good for me. I need to do travel. I need, I need to do travel. I need to travel a lot. 
in the next like six months if possible obviously she just kept saying the next three to six months you need to be alone and independent and travel is really good for you right now because your heart isn't fully healed and you can only do this alone um it's interesting like okay like I don't talk about this a lot anymore but since everything happened like over a year ago now and I've spoken really openly about my healing process and the journey that I've been on and I feel so much stronger than I ever have before and for me when people say like ha like do you feel healed I'm like do you know what my goal isn't even to heal I want to go beyond that I want to be stronger than I ever was before and I do feel like I've achieved that because wow I feel like a new person I feel so much stronger in myself in every sense. I do feel like a new person in a way. I'm still me, but I'm like a stronger version of me, which is all I ever wanted. You know, like this time last year, I was like, right, time to snap into gear. I am going to make this the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I really have. It was like a blessing in disguise. And the journey that I've gone on, I wouldn't change for the world. But, you know, in quite a vulnerable situational position being asked how's your heart yeah it's not fully healed I think it's going to take a while like there's still pain and sadness and that's totally normal I would be completely lying to myself and everyone around me if I was like yeah I'm fine my heart is whole and complete no <laughs> sadly not there's still a heaviness there and that will take a while um, to fully heal, I was going to say go, but it doesn't go, and also, this whole thing of, like, moving on, I do think you can move on, but I don't think you ever fully, <sighs> what are my words, like, I'm going to carry that for the rest of my life, so I don't think it's ever a case of fully moving on, I think you move on with your pain, and everything that you have learned, and all of these experiences in your life, maybe traumas in your life, I don't think there's ever going to be a day where you're like, yeah, okay, done, done and dusted, I'm healed. I really think you carry that with you and it's all about learning to grow and carry that trauma, right? That's something that I've realised. I don't think you ever get to a place where you're just like, yeah, Fully, well, I think you can be fully healed, but I think you, you carry a lot with you going forward. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, because you would have learnt so much from those experiences. So, it did surprise me, though, when she asked me that question. I was just like, no. She said, yeah, I can, I'm sensing a real, like, from, from my cards, basically. There was one particular card, and I wish I remembered which one it was. She said, there's a lot of like heavy, deep sadness here in your heart. And the three to six months going forward, you need to focus on travel, even if it's on your own. Being in nature, nature is a big theme that kept coming up today. She was like, you need to be grounded in nature. And that's what I love. That's when I feel most me, when I'm by the ocean or I'm out in the open air. I just love being outside. And it's something I struggle with in London. I have to be in London for work and it's where my network is, it's where my friends are. Most of my friends. I've got a lot of friends in Brighton, of course, as well. But it's where I feel like I need to be, but it's not necessarily where I want to be. Yeah, I struggle not not being outside. Like, well, I'm outside a lot, but it's, you know, in that urban life, doesn't quite fulfill me in the way that the countryside does but I know that if I were to move to the countryside that wouldn't fulfill me as well so it's about constantly finding that balance and urban life is my life right now but within that I need to take time out in the countryside so I'm actually going to Devon next week purely for that reason I know I've come to Sussex but this is like family time it's not like me time this is to reconnect with friends and family and feel nurtured being at home but going to Devon next week is like time for me and it's so interesting that this lady today 
completely picked up on that. I didn't tell her I was going to Devon or anything. She just said, you need to be at one with nature. You need that time. She was like, can you take time out? Maybe just a couple of days. It can be in the UK, maybe by the coast, because I know you love the sea. I hadn't told her any of this. Can you do that? Like you need, you need to reconnect with yourself and nature and you need to be outside and yeah, by the ocean. And I was like, yeah, I'm taking a couple of days next week in Devon and I'm by the ocean. She was like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's just amazing, you know, how they pick up on these things. Interestingly, she said that this year has been my year to focus on me and heal. And that's exactly what I have done. I've gone on this whole journey to rediscover who I am and I've kind of, I haven't let work go, but work hasn't been my main focus, which has been fine. I wouldn't have been able to do it all at once. This year I needed to focus on me. And she said 2022 is going to be my year for work and career and really focus on that. And everything that I have been focusing on this year will come into practice next year. And I feel really excited about that because I feel this creativity and inspiration coming back to me at the end of this year. And I feel like I'm so looking forward to putting that all into practice for next year. There's a lot that I want to do. I have so many ideas um, and she picked up on that. So I'm excited for next year. I think it's going to be a big year for me. She said it's like there's this big vision board and then... <laughs> she also said there's going to be a man that's coming into my life and that's nothing to focus on though I think of those things you can never go looking for it or searching for it these things just happen I think you just need to relax and know that what is meant for you won't pass you by and that brings me a great deal of comfort because I'm not looking for anything I'm not searching for anything with work, it's slightly different. I think you do need to come up with those like goals and the plans and the strategies and actively make them happen. But with things in your personal life, I think you can just know that, you know, what is meant for you won't pass you by. It will come to you, it will find you. So hearing her say all of that confirmed everything that I do believe. And I think the most significant thing, the biggest takeaway from it was at the end, she just said, I'm not worried about you. I'm not worried. This is all gonna play out exactly how you want it to. I was like, okay, well that's all, all you want to hear really, isn't it? It's very reassuring. And then at the end, I went down and I found this stone. And this is just the crystal that jumped out at me. I think with crystals, you need to let them find you. Oh my gosh, it's like literally everything that she was saying as well, but you can't go into a crystal shop and hunt for the prettiest one or read up on every single thing and go for the one that sounds the best because you want that. I think you need to let the crystal find you. And that's what I always do. Like when Christy, Kat and I go into these stores and we have our readings, we always just say, let the crystal find you. And this is the one that grabbed me. And it was not the prettiest stone in there. There was some, obviously some really pretty pink rose quartz that I did buy for my friend um, because it's all about healing and it's for the heart. So for purposes like that, when it comes to buying for other people, I think it's quite nice because it's thoughtful. But for, yeah, for me, I just let the stone find me. And this is moss agate. Is that how you say it? Agate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> why am I finding that weird to say? And I actually, at first, thought that there was moss growing inside. I don't know if you can see, right? It's quite low light. Can you see the texture in there? I thought that was actually moss. It's such an interesting crystal. There's a lot of texture inside the stone. And because it's called moss agate, I thought, wow, there's like actually moss growing inside. But apparently that is the iron that has been oxidized and it's turned green. It's such an interesting crystal. I've never seen anything like this. So yeah, I was drawn to this and I took a photo of what it meant. You have to do that because otherwise you forget, or I forget at least. 
And this, I'll read exactly what it says. It's a stone of nature. I mean, <laughs> it's literally the theme of my whole talk with this wonderful Kay, who said I need to be outside in nature more. This is the stone that grabbed me. It's a stone of nature that helps release fear and deep-seated stress, and it helps one's ability to get along with others and gives you the space to grow. It encourages trust and hope, also helpful with depression. I just found that really interesting that it says it helps you get along with others because one thing that she also said was that in my previous life I was more silent and I was more like absorbing information whereas this life that I'm in right now is all about communication and spreading my knowledge and when you think about what my job is it's all about hopefully it's about encouraging women mostly to become the best version of themselves it's spreading that knowledge it's communicating so this stone hopefully will assist with all of that i've been talking a lot longer than i thought i would i'm gonna go to bed now i am actually going to get into bed and do a little bit of journaling manifestations uh, i feel like it was a full moon yesterday and having done the tarot today it's a really good time for reflections so yeah I'm just gonna write it all down anyway this has been a bit of a random mix hasn't it where did I even start this video it was in Covent Garden and yeah it ended in Sussex bit of a journey on this video I hope you've enjoyed it if you've watched it until the end thanks for sticking around and I will see you guys very soon Bye.